And uh, so if, if the question is, how do we mentor people? I mean, how do we pair up people? So one is, well, the question is, hey, do we have enough luxury to do that? B, it will be, it may be random in the beginning, depending on how much information you have. And then the coach themselves may suggest that, hey, somebody else may be a better fit because of the location or the time, availability timings of the, uh, of the mentee, the new Muslim, or it could be, um, uh, what do you call it? Just a location or, or, or a common interest. And then also considering how we can actually uh, 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 train upcoming coaches by pairing them up uh, uh, in a situation where somebody else is mentoring someone else so they can shadow that person. Makes sense. Any, what do you think? Yeah, that makes sense. Jazakallah yeah. Hayan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, once again, Galfir, uh, like, please do let us know wh where you're coming in from. And uh, if you have any specific questions, you can uh, speak or you can type whatever works best for you. Yep. Other than that, unless uh, you say something, we'll continue with the Vancouver crew. Okay, guys. Yeah. What's, what else is going on? Uh, I can go with that, with that question. So another question that, uh, like before you choose a, a coach, I guess, do you have a process where you, um, you put them through to make sure, for example, they are fit to coach? Uh, like mm -hmm. do you ask, do you have some kind of a set of questions that you ask them or, um, or how do you know really if they are fit to, to coach or not? Okay, fantastic. Great. So I think what this is what I'm suggesting, right? So, you know, we did these uh, few modules, right? So within that module, uh, so I think it comes to, a, to identify a few things, right? Um, so one of the key characteristics that I would look for is, is commitment, right? Like it's really a high level of commitment. So it's not like, oh, I didn't have time. Well, nobody has time. We have to make time, right? So if you are coming in under this project and then you're saying, look, you know, I'm going to be given two hours maybe two hours on Thursday night or Friday, Saturday, whatever it is, or one hour on Thursday and one hour on Saturday morning, whatever it is, then you should block that time in your calendar, All right? So I think that communication is very important for me uh, because many people would come in and they're like, hey, you know, and I, I, but then you can also see them signing up for some of the other programs and, you know, tons of other activities, which is good, but then, you know, this project is suffering, right? So that is something I would definitely, you know, have that chat about that hey you know what let's have a, a high level of commitment and if you want to try it out that's fine but once you're in at least commit for two or three months so that's one second thing okay. is many, many people and what is the minimum level of how many hours do you ask them per week i would say like some least, yeah i would say 90 minutes right nine nine, okay. nine one, one and a half hour to two hours and half of that hour could also be like you know hey we also expect you to you know, do some sort of your own studies, right? So we talked about that because it's very important for people to continue their own development. So, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, like, you know, when I put in, for example, an update, it's like, hey, you know, yeah, I did my uh, study with this uh, in this class or what have you, and this is my updates on the follow-ups and things like that. So that's second. Now, the third thing is, um, obviously, before they sign up, it's also, imp so maybe I would, I have a layered approach I would call people interested, and then I have a group of core volunteers. So interested people, it can be, you know, it can be a, a lower bar. So people can come in and they can ask, and they can join in, right? And then uh, what would happen is uh, depending on how they show progress on training and commitment, then I will move them. And after an interview, which I'll talk about, then I will move them to be a core volunteer. Um, so that could be an approach as well, like a layered approach. Um, what so is the main difference between the two layers? So for example, somebody says, hey, you know what, I want to volunteer, right? So after training, you know how, how many people may say, yeah, I want to volunteer. This is great, right? But they say it, but you know, yeah. you don't know if they have, you know, um, commitment or not. So you can say, okay, that's fine. I'm going to add you to a, you know, a general group. And, and general group can also be used for general help, right? Remember we talked about general help, but like once in a while help for an event, for picking up something, dropping, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we yeah. can say, look, okay, great. So you are interested. Here is our online training. Um, I want you to fill this volunteer form and I want you to actually start going through the training and update me every week, okay? And if, if I don't hear from you, I'm not going to chase you. It just gives me a hint that, look, you're not committed, right? You have other things going on in life, which is okay. But 
you know, so this will give you, uh, so if people are not blocking time and going through the training, that means it may not be like, you know, very self-disciplined or, you know, um, uh, mm. not be the best fit at this time. Maybe later on they can become. Now, part yeah. of the, the training should do, uh, or if, if so the, the automatically the training should do it, or you can explain to people, people come in, uh, they, they, they don't realize what new Muslim mentoring is about. So the training should hopefully demystify those things because uh, they, they yeah. think I'm interested, meaning that you will give me a contact and uh, I will, um, you know, teach them how to pray, right? That is not, you know, that's the role of a passive teacher. And usually this is not what's most needed, right? You, you know, as we discuss in the training. Got you. And uh, the training, you're, you're referring to the training that you already gave to us, but it's available on YouTube, correct? Yes, yes. And I'm going to work on better version okay. of that as well. But yeah, so but there's, there's a very good version that's available, but I'm working on even improving it further. And you know, that that's a two way feedback. So as you guys see, you know, gaps and questions. And so this helps me to note, you know, maybe I should have a module that talks about this topic and so on and so forth. Now, okay. so, so that's now okay, now, you know, coming back to your original question, like, okay, how do we then evaluate, right? So right now, we just talked about yeah. you know, rec recruiting and then giving them training, then, and then it's about evaluation as well. Um, so evaluation, then you can get on the call with them, right? Or some of the senior mentors or what have you. And then, you know, uh, see if they're able, I think the first, first uh, thing is also people should be able to clearly present what Islam is, right? And that's part of the training because, you know, many people who would become Muslim may not understand what Islam is, right? So the person should have a yeah. decent level of, at least a basic level of being able to present Islam. Uh, and then an understanding of, you know, how the process works, you know, understanding that, look, they have to keep doing the dawah, they have to keep motivating them, they have to keep, you know, increasing the priority and, you know, uh, you know, to teach salah and whatnot may not come in until, you know, a very later stage in the life. Uh, and then also being able to uh, say, I don't know, or being able to, you know, reach out to the senior mentors or ask in the group that, look, I have this situation, what would you recommend, right? Not jumping to the conclusion, you know, um, uh, it's important. Because let's say somebody asks, oh, yeah, should I do this? Or should I leave my girlfriend? Or should I leave my husband? Or, you know, stuff like that. I'm just saying this is very simple, but something else can come up that the person has not thought about. So instead of giving an answer, yeah. it's good to check in. And, you know, the quality of letting them, them, them make the decision. You're not making decision for them. So, you, you know, yeah. so, so as you, so maybe when you guys review the training, also identify these questions that you want to talk to them. And maybe, you know, giving them some scenarios. And then, in, and then seeing if they're ready. Uh, obviously, I think the, the first case or so, uh, you should probably try to do it uh, in a way that you can shadow it, right? So let's say one of the senior members or uh, someone who has done it would work with a junior one and the junior one would take the lead, but the senior one is also monitoring the conversation or, you know, shadowing as well. So, you know, if, if he or she can then see that, look, the, the junior one is not following up enough, he's not reaching out once a week, or if he's saying something wrong, then instead of correcting him on the group, I would recommend the senior member reach out to the junior one and then suggest that, hey, you know, what if we take this approach and whatnot sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously another thing that would happen is that, you know, uh, from the weekly perspective, right? So what I'm hoping is that either the manager or the senior leader uh, would work with the junior one and say, okay, you know what, so we gave you, uh, you know, this contact, how is the situation? How is he or how is she developing? You know, what is your approach to them, right? So it's going to be an on, ongoing hands-on training as well. So not like you can't just say, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna give, you know, uh, raise my hands and everything is fine now. So keeping an eye and, you know, following up is important with, with the junior coaches as well. Mm. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So for example, and then I think, so like, for example, then we could, you, know, you guys can have these type of sessions, like what we are doing here uh, in person where, you know, all the coaches, uh, mentors can get together if it's possible once a month, you know, at, at some place, and then, you know, discuss how their progress is going, you know, what challenges people are finding, um, or what are some of the things that they tried and it worked really well in their situation. So that could be another option. And if you can't do it in person, maybe uh, you guys can do it on the phone. Uh, if that becomes challenging as well, then you can have two options, right? Some people can call in, let's say Saturday morning, some can call in Saturday night, 
So this way, you know, depending on the number of mentors you have, everybody would have a chance to at least, you know, uh, get together as a group once a month or something, because most of the work would be independent, right? Uh, so yeah. this would make it like kind of like a once a month type of activity. Uh, but uh, but in, as far as the communication goes, uh, I'm highly uh, recommending that, you know, all the mentees, uh, all the mentors update their progress uh, once a week in two places. One is uh, just on the WhatsApp group and uh, or for historical record, they can also uh, record it in the HubSpot. I, get, I hope you guys saw that, how, I'm, uh, how it can be done, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another question I also had, like in the training, you described pretty well what are kind of the expected um, difficulties we might have with new Muslims, right? Like when you're coaching them, what kind of questions they might ask and what kind of process you, you need to follow to coach them. But uh, it was a little bit lacking from the perspective of uh, how can I do the same for the coach? Because... Um, in, in some way, I will need to do the same for the coach, right? Like some difficult situations will arise uh, with the coach themselves uh, and I need to coach the coach to get them to more senior level, right? Um, so this is like some feedback for a training. Maybe if there is a training like that, that would be great for the okay, organizers. So, yes, let me, let me uh, understand this better. So, so is it to help the, so, okay. So can you give me an example of a problem, for example? Uh, that is exactly what was my question about. Like, if you because you have more experience with coaches, what are some of the problems that might that usually arises or might arise, ah, and how okay, best to deal with it, right? So something like like someone just disappearing on you, or someone like I don't know, like creating some fitna in the group. I don't know, like what are the possible situations? Okay, fantastic. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier, right? Okay, this is very good. Yeah, because. Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, so this is interesting. I think maybe, yeah, this could then be a follow-up uh, call or module for to discuss with, let's say, the, the, the leadership team, right? Because, you know, yeah. we, we were already struggling with covering the content that we had for the coaches themselves, <laughs> yeah. right? So, but I think yeah, that's a good, very good point. And then maybe I should start making some notes on that, right? So right now, what's on the top of my mind, because this keeps coming in, is this notion of, you know, uh, people not being like, you know, yeah, I mean, how many times, bro, like people would say, yeah, I'm interested. And it's just like, you know, you, and then you start seeing the excuses coming in, right? And that's yeah. okay. But then, you know, at the end of the day, it's also, you know, costing me my time, right? So that's yeah. why I'm trying to also create a lot of stuff that's automated. So this way, what, what I'm uh, hoping this is a solution to is that you can have a low bar for entry, but then, you know, so anybody say, yeah, I'm interested. Okay, fantastic. We have this training. And hopefully what I will do is we will move this training into, uh, into this, you know, online learning platforms, like, uh, uh, you know, like, what is it? Like, like that has the quizzes and stuff embedded. Right, right. And then, and you can see that, you know, who is making progress and who is not and stuff like that. Uh, so this way yeah. it becomes like easier, right? So now you can see, okay, this guy said he's interested. And then it's been like a week and or two weeks or three weeks and there's no progress, right? So you can see, right? It was like a momentarily yeah. uh, state <laughs> saying interested, but then, you know. So uh, other than that, yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I do. Yeah, so one of the things that's why I'm saying, like, you know, when you keep in touch with the people uh, at least once a month in person, what have you, that helps. And obviously, if you don't see them updating uh, WhatsApp or HubSpot every week, then I would reach out to them. And obviously, as, as the team grows, then you can have layers, right? And then someone would reach out to them and say, hey, you know what, we are not seeing anything from you, what's going on? And then, you know, the mentors would say, okay, yeah, I, I did message them, but he did not respond or she did not respond. And, you know, I, I didn't feel like there was anything to update. And then, so then you may have to, yeah, you may have to keep telling them that, hey, you know what, it's okay, you know? Uh, and that's why when I send my updates, I always highlight that, look, there's no response, no response, no response. And then after two weeks, you know, I would see them responding, right? So. So that this is part of the work that, you know, your success is not, you know, did your mentee uh, respond to you or did he or she learn or not? Because, you know, it's not something that you really can control a lot. Uh, uh, so, but what we are trying to do as a team that we want to reach out to them. So you may have to, you know, have that sort of conversation so they can understand, you know, they'll, they know this theoretically, but they, it's, it's good to have that sort of chat whenever you see the motivation going down uh, from a convert, right? Um, from, men, from a coach. And then obviously highlighting the successes um, of the team 
And also, also remember that it's a team success because look, let's say if you guys start mentoring, you know, five uh, new Muslims um, and then you randomly spread them around and, you know, one of them really picks up, that is success for everyone because, you know, everyone was contributing to it because uh, nobody knew that, okay, which one of them would be like, you know, most uh, successful from, from a physical metrics, right? external metrics, right? So, you know, just having those sort of things are, you know, very valuable. Yeah, and then, so that's a good point. And I think that's why I'm trying to have these, uh, you know, coaches group that people can, you know, be able to reach out and share that, hey, you know what, we are running into this thing and then we can brainstorm uh, things together. But uh, great, that's a good point.